Welcome to this first tutorial for Animation Master. Uh, in this first tutorial we're going to start out with the interface. The first time that you open Animation Master this is what you will see. Uh, this tip of the day window will show up and you can tell it to show it on startup or you can uncheck the box. You can go through the tips to look at those or what you can do is close it and go up to uh, help tip of the day and it will show those. So I like to close it and turn it off so that it doesn't show up. On your left this is the library windows where you can store shortcuts to your models, actions, materials, images, and other things. I don't like to use it, I just like to pull up what I need uh, just because I don't like to have to worry about keeping these organized. Uh, so I usually close that down. And then over here on your right there is the community window. If you click here you can sign into hash.com and, and have access to online content, uh, chat rooms, that kind of thing but I don't ever use that either so I turn it off. Now this main window is a default choreography or this is what you, where you start. Um, a choreography is where you take pieces that you have built and put them all together in an animation. And so because we don't want to do there, we don't want to do this, we want to start uh, with a model. Uh, I close this window down also and then we'll go into preferences. So go up to tools and go to options uh, in your options box, in this global uh, global tab here, uh, you'll see all these things here. The first thing you'll want to do is switch to, at startup, do nothing, uncheck reload last project when available, and then check these two boxes here. And we'll talk about more of these. Skip frames if behind when playing means that when you play your animation down here, it will actually play at the frame rate that you want it to, whether that's 30 frames a second, 24 frames a second, 12 frames a second, whatever you set it at it will play that. It will skip frames so that it will reach that frame rate. Uh, if you uncheck that, it will play every frame and won't show the, the frame rate. So uh, I usually keep that checked. And then show advanced properties and show property triangles. Uh, these two are uh, very much needed when you are uh, working with objects. So I keep those checked. User info, you can change your uh, name, organization, website, and email to uh, these will be embedded in, in all the files that you create. Go to units and I leave it at centimeters. I leave it at 30 frames a second but I switch it to frames elapsed so that it's not under a time code. The other thing that I do is I uncheck use CP spacing direction for extrude and switch Y to zero. That way when you copy and paste uh, or when you extrude it will copy and paste it directly on top of what you copied. Uh, and that way it won't offset it at all. So that's that's that tab. In, under modeling I leave this one just the way it is. Under lathe cross sections this is where when you create a profile curve and you want to lathe something this is how many sections it will divide it into. Uh, these things right here you can also uh, access up here on the toolbar. Action I just leave it the way it is but I uncheck smart force key. Uh, choreography I leave this the way it is. Folders, just leave that the way it is. This is where your uh, plugins are located. You can tell where your plugins here, your libraries, motion capture, this is this will store those for you. Motion capture data, you can use that if you want to. Under the rendering tab, I check the advanced box and leave it the way it is here. Except that I go under default and then show back facing polys, I turn that to off. And that's so when you're modeling you can see whether your normals are flipped or not. Uh, go into OpenGL, this is just your drivers for your video card. Sound, I leave it that way so that when you're playing sound it plays it in stereo and at 44 uh, kilohertz. Onion skin is also known as ghosting in like Maya. Uh, you can set this to be that way in animations but it tends to slow the program down quite a bit so I just leave it off. Um, and that's all the options that we've set, so I hit OK. Now we want to show certain views uh, to set up our workspace. So go under View, and then you can go under, uh, excuse me, uh, view, view here. The first one is Project Workspace. I click on that and you'll see this window come up. The Project Workspace is where all, the, uh, all your objects are stored, whether it is in a choreography or whether it is under any one of these file folders. Um, all your images that you're using are here, uh, your sounds are here, materials, post effects, all your objects. Uh, 
If I open it right now, you'll see that when I started it up, it gave me a default choreography which has a camera, a key light, a fill light, a rim light, and the ground plane in it. And if I look under objects, that has those models. These are just shortcuts. Now in a choreography I can do one of two things. I can change things in the choreography but it doesn't change the model itself or I can change the model and it will update in the choreography. So we'll work with choreographies a little more later on. But for right now you can see how it stores here. Uh, underground you can see that there are splines uh, and these are the property triangles right here that we were talking about and you'll want to be able to see these things here uh, when you're working with objects. So the project workspace is the main window that you'll use. If you drag this out, you'll be able to see that there is uh, your frame numbers here. And if I click this right here and drag it, you'll see that my frame these are my frame numbers. Um, this is a timeline, but what we'll do instead of using this, we'll close it down and we'll go up to View, Timeline. This will give me uh, my timeline. Um, but what is nice about this is whatever I check, whatever I click on here, it will update it down here and only give me the data for that. If I check on a choreography, it will give me all of these and the data for all of these. Um, I can switch between graph editor mode or I can go into dope sheet mode, which will show me where my keys are, and then I can use uh, those to edit animations. Um, I can switch to each individual object in the choreography, um, and that way it's not cluttered. If I use this one, I see everything uh, for every object at the same time. So if I have uh, keys set on everything here, I will see them all and I can't differentiate between them. Um, so I like just using uh, the timeline. So I'm going to close this down to there. The other window that I like to have open is my properties window. And if you look under these uh, in the proper or in the uh, triangle here, properties triangle, there's a separate window called the properties window also known in Maya as like the attribute editor uh, these will all show up in it so I'm gonna go to view properties and now you'll see what it looks like here let me shut this down this is the properties window right here so now when I click on an object if I go to my objects and I click on the camera you'll see that if I open up this property triangle um, it has all this information. All that same information is right here in the properties menu. The reason why I like the properties menu open versus the property triangle is when you have all these objects here, um, you don't want to have to open up the properties triangle here every time you want to change something. You want to just be able to click on it and have it all available right here for you. So that's the properties box. Now this is the way that I like to, to set up my interface so that I can uh, navigate easily in this window, uh, access my objects here, see my properties, and animate at the same time. Now in the rest of this, um, you'll see all your toolbars up here. This is your file toolbar, your cut, uh, or your cut and paste, and delete, undo, redo. This is your render toolbar. This is your manipulator toolbar. This is your uh, modeling mode, distortion mode, bones mode, grooming mode for hair, uh, and then muscle mode, skeletal mode, dynamics, uh, choreography mode, and then these are your other manipulators, standard, then your translate mode, uh, this is your scale mode, and this is your rotate mode. This is uh, world space, but I usually never use that, and then this is your showing for bias handles, and we'll talk about that in a little while. This is your manipulator properties box and this is snap to the grid, this is show your rulers, this is offset, magnet mode, mirror mode, and then a few other things also. I'll, I'll actually do this so you can see it better. And take this and drop it down here. So now you can see um, the other part of this. This is define a relationship button and this is animate mode. If I have this unchecked it won't set, it won't automatically set keys for me. But if I have it checked it will set keys for me when I'm animating. So what I'm going to do here is to put this back here, and then I'm going to go up to Project and say New. Now a project is kind of like a Maya file in that everything that you have in, inside here you can save within a project. They will be external files, but the project will save references to those, so you can open a project and it will open multiple files at once. Um, I never really use those, mainly because um, 
in or, when you save a project, it automatically saves everything within here. Uh, so if I have some objects that I've been working on and I hit project save, but I didn't want to save the objects, it will save those objects over the top of themselves uh, and not a new iteration. So I usually just work in uh, just saving objects and never saving properties, I mean projects. Um, so now I've got this blank project, which doesn't have any objects, actions, choreographies, anything in it. And this is where we like to start. The other thing I want to do here is you go under Tools to Customize. Here's your Customize dialog box. Here you can tell what, what uh, toolbars you want to see. If you, if you see here, I'm checking Modeling, Bones, Distortion, Dynamics, Muscle, Skeletal, and Grooming. And these are all the toolbars that are available. Now the nice thing about this, um, let me uncheck all of these. The nice thing about this is this is context sensitive. So depending on what I'm working on in the modeling window, this will change according to this. So you actually don't have to have those toolbars up. So I just leave it the way it is. Commands is where you can replace commands and create ta or create uh, toolbars or swap out things for toolbars. So for example, this is the render lock mode. Uh, where you can set a region to render and while you're working it will constantly update rendering kind of like a the IPR render in Maya um, except it's in your working window so it's a lot like uh, XSI in that in that matter uh, but I don't want it to lock there I just want to hit uh, shift Q and have it be able to do a progressive quick render so I can check things so what I'm gonna do is go to render and then you can see these buttons here this is the progressive mode or enter progressive render mode if I grab it, I can go add it to this toolbar. And then this one I don't need there anymore, so I grab it and just drag it off. And now my toolbars are back to the way they were. And I can do that with any of these. You can see these are all the frame, are all the buttons that are down here. Manipulator, you can see all those up here. Mode, these are all right here. Navigation, tools, all that kind of thing. You can customize these very, very easily. So I just leave them at that. Tools, I leave it there. Keyboard, this is where you can set uh, your hotkeys. Um, I like to go and like I just did, uh, progressive render. Let's see here, where is it here? Mm -hmm. Let me find it here real quick. I guess it's not on this uh, this list, so I'm just gonna hit OK and look. Uh, actually, it is under. Shift Q, that's what I wanted it to be. So the default is Shift Q. So I'm going to go back to the customize window. And this is where you can set up your, your hotkeys. Um, I usually leave all the hotkeys the default, and that's what we'll be using in all of these. Appearance, this is where you can change the look of your interface. Uh, this is the default. It's kind of this dark green with a black grid and white uh, splines. Um, I like to actually change it. I'm going to change it to um, leave the background and leave the grid, but I'm going to change objects to a medium gray, just so that they're not so bright. Uh, a lot of times when you're trying to work with them on a surface that is very shiny, you'll lose them and you'll, it'll be hard to see them, so I'm just going to hit OK. Excuse me. And then the last one is Agent. You'll see this little guy show up. Um, and he's kind of a helper or whatever. Whenever you hit Help, he'll show up. Uh, I just don't worry about that because I never use it. You'll see this little hat show up and that way if I double click him he'll show up and then he can answer questions for me. I can right click on him and then say hide and he'll go away. So I've set up all my options. I've set up my tools and set up my interface all the way that I want it to be. Uh, this is the, the most effective way that I've found of working and this is the way I'll be working throughout these tutorials. So you can customize it, customize it however you would like and, and whatever feels best to you. Um, one other thing is you can drag these windows out or you can dock them. Um, I like to dock them back um, along the side. Oops. Let's drag it out here. Whoop. Anyways, uh, I like to drag it uh, out so I can see um, where it is. So I'm just going to kind of drag it out here. You can see kind of how you can place them anywhere you want here and it will uh, show up wherever you'd like it to be. So in previous versions they've you've been able to dock it a lot better than, than 
than this, but um, this is pretty good. So I'm going to just do this, and I've got my timeline, my properties, and my project workspace now. So uh, we'll leave it like that. Actually do this, close down that, and you can see how I'm just moving them around however I would like them to be. Um, it's pretty handy, and it's a good interface. So uh, with that, we will start on with the uh, other tutorials.